I think that's a significant accomplishment. Um, I was really proud of the way our players competed in the game. I uh, thought the defense did a fantastic job. Uh, turnovers were huge. Uh, to have the three interceptions, the three turnovers, uh, all sort of drive stoppers. And, uh, you know, offensively, we struggled a little bit in the second half. Uh, didn't move the ball with the kind of consistency we needed. I thought at the end of the third quarter, we were really tired on defense, which, you know, was a bit of an issue for us. But um, we needed to put a great drive together on offense and answer the bell and score to make it a two-score game. Uh, the offense put a great drive together. Blake made two critical, you know, third down conversions, you know, in that scramble conversions, you know, in that drive. Um, but, you know, this is a really good football team that we played today. Uh, and, you know, really, really hard to stop. And I think our defense did a, did a fantastic job of, you know, holding them to what we were able to, 13 points until, you know, 15 seconds to go in the game. And we were trying to shrink the game in the end. It been great to stop them, but um, we did it well enough that uh, even if they would have got the onside kick, they wouldn't have a whole lot of time to score. So. Um, you know, I can't tell you how proud I am of the way our players competed in the game. And you've got to give Mississippi State's players a lot of credit. They really came out the second half and played outstanding football. And, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're a great team. And kind of knew at halftime when you play teams like this that they were going to come out in the second half regardless of what happens. It, it's a little bit like the Auburn game, Cam Newton game here. We got ahead 24-6 or whatever it was. Um, and. You know, they came back in the second half. That's why they're a good team. That's why they're number one. Um, you know, but our team's shown that they have an ability to do that, and we made plays when we had to make, to, make them today, and uh, I think that was uh, a sign of great competitive character from our team as well. <laughs> Sweet, wonder what you saw from Blake on that, that last touchdown drive and what he's been able to do kind of in these kind of pivotal moments. Well, you know, we did a really good job of executing. We dropped a couple balls, you know, that made it more difficult for us uh, in the second half. But on that drive, um, I already mentioned the two third down conversions, but he did a good job of getting us in the right plays and uh, really did a good job of executing. You know, our consistency on, on offense, we, we just have to do a little bit better job of creating balance um, and, you know, control the football against a team like this, when we knew in the game that we needed to control the football so that they wouldn't have the ball. They had 88 plays, which is, you know, too many, uh, in my opinion. Uh, but the way that they don't have 88 plays is uh, we got to get a few more third down stops in. They converted three times on fourth down. And we also have to control the ball on offense and do a better job offensively on a more consistent basis. But. Um, one of the greatest drives, you know, in Alabama history, probably, to go down there and make it a two-score score game, you know, in the fourth quarter. How healthy was TJ tonight, and what did you see from particularly when you mentioned the drive, your running game really got going, that, that drive? Well, I think it's the key, man. I think when we can run the ball, um, you know, it, it makes a huge difference, you know, in the passing game. It makes a huge difference in explosive plays. Uh, we made a couple of explosive plays in the first half, probably didn't make enough in the second half, but uh, we were able to run the ball when we had to, and um, I think that's a real key for us. And I think for us to be able to improve on that and continue to be able to do that is going to be a real key for us in the future in terms of uh, being able to be successful against some of the really good teams we're going to have to play. Uh, TJ, you know, I thought he played well in the game. Uh, probably wasn't as explosive as, you know, normal, but uh, the guy's a true warrior in terms of um, there was no way you were going to keep him out of the game. He wanted to play, um, and, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get him healed up and he'll be better here, you know, down the stretch if we can give him a little time off, um, you know, in the next few days to try to get him healed up. A lot of talk during the week was containing Dak Prescott. How, would, how do you think you would assess the way you guys contain him? Well, you know, I, I think that, you know, you can talk all you want about their quarterback, but, you know, they got a good running back. They've got some really good wideouts. Number six is probably as good a tight end as we played against all year. Uh, you know, four who has missed a couple games is 
you know, really a quick, explosive guy. Number one is a really, really difficult matchup problem. Uh, and then when you couple the quarterback runs and the formations and the ability that you have to have to be able to uh, cover their skill guys, it is a real handful. You know, this is a really good offensive football team. I think one of the probably the best offensive teams. It's the best offensive team in our conference statistically, but probably one of the best in the country and definitely one of the most difficult to defend. And it is because of the quarterback's ability to throw as well as run that makes it very difficult. When you get in those fourth and three, third and three, third and four situations, I mean, when the quarterback can run the ball and he can pass it, 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 it's 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 a it's a tough day's work to get him off the field. Their first two scores on both on either side of the half, both field goals. How important was it for threes instead of sevens there? Well, you know, we had a couple of those, you know, early in the game too. When you know we missed a field goal that would have put us to 22, uh, which would have made it a three-score game at the time. And I think we had a third and 11, you know, right after that miss, that we played zone and they converted, and then they went on down to score uh, the first touchdown. So um, playing well in the red area is critical. Getting turnovers is critical. Uh, I think those two things probably were the difference in the game for us, you know, today in terms of stopping them, stopping their offense. How much more do you trust Blake to make the right decisions in terms of throwing it away or tucking and running than you did maybe at the beginning of the season? Well, you know, I've always trusted Blake. You know, Blake's got good instincts in terms of, you know, where to throw the ball, uh, timing of throwing the ball. I mean, we showed a lot of trust in him when it was third down and 11 or 12 or whatever at the end of the game, and um, he threw the ball. He came up a yard short on the first down and made a good decision on it, but um, I trust Blake uh, to make good decisions, and uh, he has a great instinct and a great feel for, as most sort of scrambling quarterbacks do, uh, when to run, and uh, he made two fantastic third down conversions that they run the ball, but um, we trust Blake. I mean, we trust him, and especially when he's playing his game uh, and he's not confused, which a couple times on the road this year he got a little bit. But, you know, our issues today on offense didn't have anything to do with Blake. Blake played a really good game, I thought. Uh, you know, we just didn't get him blocked like we needed to a couple times, and, you know, we dropped a few balls that uh, we normally would catch. So we need to clean those things up so we can be a little more consistent, possess the ball a little better. In the middle of the way. Coach, you talked about how you were going to give them hard practices during the week. Everyone said you should rest, and you were like, no, we're going to practice them hard. How hard were the practices, and do you feel like that played a role in how guys respond? We practice exactly like we play practice for every, every game. Um, you know, if there was a better way to practice, we would do it. I mean, uh, I sat in here from the Florida game until now with everybody asking me what a big game it is. This is really a big game. Florida game was a really big game. Ole Miss, really, every game is a really big game. So if there was a better way to do it, why, why would we be doing it for those games? You know, so, you know, we have a routine that our players expect in terms of what we do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and, you know, when we have an opportunity, we give the players two days off uh, and don't play so many games in a row. I don't like to play more than four games in a row without the players having two days off, which means we don't practice on Monday. And we're not going to practice this Monday. All right, so it uh, gives us time to get healed up and for the players to use the time to, you know, get some rest. And, you know, because we had tough games coming up, you know, I mean, and we're just like being in the playoffs now. Can't afford to lose, so every game's a big game. Last one, I think. Nick, you talked about the difficult matchup on uh, number one. Can you speak to Cyrus Jones and how much he's improved and how much the secondary has improved over the course of the season and what that has allowed you to do as a defense? Right, well, you know, we, we, we uh, Cyrus, first of all, has done a really good job all year long for us. I think he's been our best cover corner and uh, certainly did a good job tonight against a tough matchup. 
uh, especially size-wise for him. Uh, but I do think that early on, you know, we had guys hurt, different combinations in the lineup uh, that sort of affected us and um, ended up playing the freshman, you know, Tony Brown, uh, a couple games. But getting Eddie back healthy probably gave us a little more experience on uh, a guy that has played and made plays. And, you know, Landon has been pretty consistent. Nick Perry has improved. You know, Jerry Williams has played well for us in spots. And, you know, Gino played a really good game tonight at Star. We thought we had to have a, a, a little better coverage matchup on the slot. So uh, he did a really good job in a game for us tonight. So um, I do think our secondary has improved through the course of the year. Um, and make, getting the, 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 the picks tonight were big. The turnovers were big. And, um, but I also think that we have minimized explosive plays, right, which is probably the biggest thing. We didn't have any last week at LSU. And even though they had, they had quite a few yards, you know, they, they had to go the hard way most of the time. Thanks, folks. All right, Larry, thank you. You know, and I'd just like to say one thing about it, the fans. You know, the atmosphere that we had in the stadium tonight, I mean, that's really what college football was all about. I know it was uh, had a huge impact on uh, our players, uh, the energy and enthusiasm certainly translated in the way that, that we played uh, against a very good team. And I just want to thank all the, the supporters and fans who created a great atmosphere for our team. So thank you.